24 25 kalyan are you there in the meeting yes Yeah, guys very good afternoon okay so today we are going to continue that topics gears yesterday we started and some more basics we discussed today then we move to the uh, more in for more depth information okay so yesterday we discussed uh, gears uh, i mean uh, just we started that content gears so just to recap first a couple of minutes because there, there are less number of students before they joining them before joining the meeting we will discuss we will discuss some of the basics okay i mean gears what is the application of gears here yeah? we would like to transmit the power right the transmit the power in certain distance i mean certain distance in the sense where the distance are very small between two shaft those places we are using gears for transmitting the power right now i mean we are using pulleys belt also that is depends on that depends on the power transmission distance okay i mean gear 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 is nothing but or mechanical device mechanical device right see i mean the machines usually run at low speed and require high torque for example in case of uh, for example uh, i mean overhead traveling crane the tra in the overhead traveling crane the motor speed the motor runs 1400 rpm but the rope drum will rotate to 20 rpm how the speed got reduced with the help of the gears okay now some other example for lathe machine i mean you might have been studied in basic mechanical engineering subject lathe machine there we are using different types of different types of speed different types of speed we are using for the reducing or controlling the uh, spindle speed because based on material we have to reduce the speed or increase the spindle speed for performing the machining operations hence we are using a their gearbox in the gearbox we are using multiple gears based on size of the gears based on number of teeth the speed can be reduced or increased or vice versa so that's what now the gear is great but i mean not limited applications even if you take your watch i mean watch right no you know you were then there are small 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 gears we are using right now the transmit the now see belt drive and rope drive power transmission with respect to friction effect right but in gear drive and chain drive the power transmission with respect to engagement and disengagement i mean later we are going to study it depends on types of gears what type of load is acting in the gears we are going to discuss in the later okay now i mean but the selection of the power, power transmission component either gear or pulley depends on so i mean distance between the components power transmission distance between two components velocity ratio between input shaft and output shaft and uh, i mean the i mean cost of the component suppose if i'm using belt drive the cost is less as compared to a gear drive mechanism <laughs> suppose if i'm using rope drive rope drive cost is less than the belt drive mechanism <laughs> that's what depends on cost of the mechanisms also we have to consider okay and uh, i mean especially we know already 
a flat belt or roll chain can be suitable for very long distance for transmission between one shop to another shop but if you if you take a, a v belt it can be a short distance as compared to belt drive v belt can be used for short distance but if you take gear drives it is smaller distance center distance between the two shots is very small so those places only gear mechanism is applicable okay now i mean what is the gear i mean i mean what is the gear gear is nothing but i mean two third wheel or multi lobed cans provide the outer periphery of the drum outer periphery of the cylindrical drum that is the design some geometry safe of the gear okay now gear drive is a positive well a positive drive and velocity ratio remains constant and gear drive i mean no slip effect this is these are the advantages in the gear drive and it can be transmitted huge amount of power as compared to belt and road drive okay and the gears are provided in the gearbox i mean appropriate position and orientation for example our four wheeler vehicle or two wheeler vehicle the gears multiple gears are positioned at proper orientation to obtain the variable speed while driving the vehicle so i mean compact construction means i mean from that when we are here we are using gears for small small gears in the compact place to obtain our to fulfill our requirements the requirements is nothing but to reduce the speed of the vehicle okay so now what are the types of gears now we move to the types of gears now i mean you might have been studied in the i mean bme just we recap first first 10 to 15 minutes then we go for deep discussion about the gears now first gear is i mean gear drive i told you that i mean the bigger one is what is a bigger bigger one what is the name of this bigger one gear gear small one is pinion yeah pinion now pinion uh, pinion this is a gear this is gear this is pinion pinion now now the climb the the gears can be classified broadly classified into four types one is spur gear helical gear bevel gear warm gears and rock and pinion also available but these are the five we are using most of the places these five gears are very important we are using automobile application we are using manufacturing application we are using machine tool applications we are using automobile applications even i told you that electronic industries for example in clocks we are using this type of mechanism right gear mechanism so this is the four five gear types are very very important so one by one we will see that i mean first we see that it has i mean spur gear see this is the spur gear now right types of gears that's a parallel parallel that uh, parallel in spur gears the teeth are cut parallel to the axis of the shop the I mean in spur gear the teeth are cutting parallel to the axis of the shop helical gear anyway one by one we'll see that helical gear rack and pinion these are the teeth are parallel now intersecting gears bevel gears and non intersecting non parallel this warm and warm gear here this is the i mean you might have been seen the spur gear helical gear and rock and pinion in for example spur gear we are using clocks <laughs> spur gear we are using in our automobile engines even gear box you might have been seen and bevel gear we are using in uh, differential unit i mean wherever the two shafts are intersecting inter I mean the output shaft and the input shaft are intersecting those places we are using bevel gear now non intersecting non parallel here warm and warm wheel or warm and warm gear we are using now one by one we will see that a spur gear now the spur gear the teeth of the gear wheels are parallel to the axis of the wheel okay the gears are called parallel spur gear 
Now they transmit the power from one shop to another shop means that when the two shop, shop to one and the shop to two, when there are parallel, that place only be able to use this type of gas. See here the tooths are cut, the tooths here prepared or made parallel to the axis of the shop, parallel to the axis of the shop. Okay, now this is the spur gear. I mean, spur gear, very important. This kind of questions you may expect. Spur gear impose the radial loads on the shop. Radial loads. Radial loads on the shop. Okay, this is the spur gear. Now, <clears throat> now I come to the, uh, I mean, this is the original spur gear uh, image. Now, this is a gear, this is a pinion. Now I come to this per gear, this is the external gears, the gear and pinion rotates in opposite direction, but in pulleys, both pulley, I mean driven pulley and driving pulley, both are so rotating in same direction, right? But in gears, it's a rotation is different. This is a clock, this is in anti-clockwise direction, this is in clockwise direction. Now, now this is per gear, internal spur gear, whatever earlier I've shown you, that is external spur gear, this internal spur gear <coughs> okay but it is it will rotate the same direction you may expect this type of objective questions internal spur gear and external spur gear it can be when we are using internal gears the rotation will be same then internal pinion and uh, pinion and gear both are in same rotation same direction of rotation now helical gear now i come to the helical gear pair of helical gears now Pair of helical gears, the tooths of the gears cut in the some uh, somewhat an angle, some angle. That's what the tooth of the gears cut in the form of helix angle around the gears. This tooth, this, I mean, their teeth are not parallel to the axis of the shop. The teeth are this is a sharp axis, not parallel to the axis of the shop. I mean, now here in spur gear, the engagement and the disengagement going to happen suddenly because this is a 90 degree i mean see this is a i mean uh this is the cut is the cut is nine cut is the, the angle of cut is 90 degree not 90 degree parallel to the shop hence engagement and the disengagement going to happen suddenly when the gear and pinion functioning now in this so helical gear the engagement and the disengagement going to happen smoothly and the helical gear can be used for high power transmission high power transmission now this is the compare i mean i mean helical gear applications and smooth functioning and it can be transmitted more amount of power as compared to spur gear okay and here this is the helical gear and now i come to the herringbone gear this is herringbone gear is nothing but to avoid the axial thrust the two helical gears are opposite end i mean this is the single piece of the gear unit single piece of the cylindrical uh, disc we made the i mean the heli teeth is like this it is we made it like this okay now I mean, one more thing I would like to tell you here. I mean, what type of force developed in the <coughs> helical gear? <clears throat> here, the helical gear is, I mean, this is the, heli in, in the design application, the helical gear, the right hand pinion meshes with the left hand pinion. This is the right hand pinion, left hand pinion meshes with the right hand pinion. Okay, pinion, but here, the helical gear imposes the radial and the thrust loads on the shock radial plus the thrust load on the shop the thrust load earlier case only radial the radial and the thrust loads on the shop in the helical gear now come to the herringbone gear this is a special type of gear here 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 consisting two helical gears in opposite hand of the helix two helical gears in the opposite hand of the helix is designed with a single disc single solid disc on the outer periphery outer circumference of the disc now this construction based on this construction based on this design concept here result in equal 
this teeth and this teeth result in equal and opposite trust reactions hence i mean of result and equal the result in equal and opposite the thrust in thrust reactions hence no thrust load acting in the the bow in the shot in the shot okay okay now the summation of the thrust load from this design of the gear this teeth and this is going to be finally zero the summation of the thrust loads acting this gear Hence, axial th the thrust load acting on the shaft is going to be zero. This is one special advantage is using this type of gears. But I mean, what if here this gear, the herringbone gears can be used only parallel shaft. This gear also it can be only used for parallel shaft. Now, <clears throat> these two shafts are parallel. Now I come to the bevel gear. Now bevel gear now. <clears throat> bevel gear this is the i mean the bevel gears they have the shape of truncated cone what is a truncated cone this is truncated cone the size of the gear tooth including the thickness and the height decreases towards the size of the gear tooth including the thickness height going to be decreases from here to here decreases decreases now where we are using this type of gears i mean bevel gears we are normally using the right angles the shaft for the shaft right angle to each other this is shaft to one this is shaft to one this is shaft to the two shafts are right angle to each other right angle to each other especially in i mean our differential unit we already disc i mean you might have been studied in the bme differential unit this is important role bevel gear is very very important role there there we are for transmitting the power from to uh, perpendicular shock okay right angles to each other now what is this here <clears throat> i mean that the tooth of the bevel gears can be straight can be straight or spiral but bevel gear impose the radial and thrust loads on the shock here the here also the bevel gear also impose the radial plus thrust load on the shock okay now this is one gear and uh, next this is already we discussed bevel gears already we discussed this again repeating now i come to the types of bevel gears this is a straight bevel gear this is a spiral bevel gear okay but the i mean the very important thing is the two shops are perpendicular to each other that is very important hello yeah i am in the class please call me 3 o'clock 3:30 i will come and collect you might have been called early na now i am in the class please okay 3:15 i will come and collect 3:15 okay 3:15 <laughs> okay now we come to the rock and pinion in the rock and pinion this is a special type of gear i mean see here this is a special type of gear the special type of gear the case of special the special case of spur gear in which one gear having infinite diameter which one is having infinite diameter this is this is uh, this is called rock <laughs> this is rock Now the rock and pinion. This is pinion. This is infinite diameter. You may expect this type of questions. One, I mean, objective questions. <laughs> okay. Now rock and pinion. The rock and pinion transmit the rotary motion into reciprocating motion. Why are vice versa? Okay. Rock and pinion. Now rock moves linearly. I mean, the rock the rock moves always linearly. when they driven by pinion rotates the rock mode linearly okay now this is the now warm and warm wheel or warm and warm gear this is warm wheel which one is this is a warm wheel this one this is warm okay now warm and warm gear now 
I mean, the warm gear consists of warm and warm wheel. Okay, but the warm is in the form of threaded screw. I mean, this is nothing but it looks like a threaded screw. I mean, only we able to apply the input here, input to power here only. <laughs> I mean, we cannot give input to power in this uh, in this gear. We are giving input to power through this warm. Then that power will be transmitted to the pinion or warm wheel. But it it won't work vice versa. Only one direction. We are trans. We are giving the apply the input power here. And the power is transmitted to the warm gear. Okay, now here the warm gear drives as they are, you are used for the shaft of the axis which do not intersect and perpendicular. I mean, this is the shaft axis. The shaft axis do not intersect but are perpendicular. The which condition we are using? The shaft axis do not intersect but each shafts are perpendicular to each other. In this case, in that case, we are using warm and warm gear mechanism for transmitting the power. Okay, the warm gear here, the warm, the warm, the warm imposes the uh, high thrust load. The warm imposes the high thrust load, while the warm wheel imposes the while the warm will impose the high radial load on the shaft. The warm, this is the warm. Impose the high thrust loads. When the warm wheel, see here, when the warm wheel imposes the high radial load on the shaft. So, what is the important role here? The radial load plus thrust load. Okay. Radial load where it will be generated? Warm from the warm. High impose the high thrust load while engage with the warm wheel while warm wheel imposes the radial load on the shop radial load on the shop finally radial plus thrust load will be imposes on the shop of the mechanism okay now this is a non-parallel a non-intersecting shot a non-coplanar shot can be connected and then I mean, the very important application using the warm and warm gears, this is used to reduce the gear reduction ratio is needed. The commonly we are using up to 20 to 20 is to one power ratio. Even we can go up to, I mean, 300 is to one. Okay, warm gears are widely used for material handling, transportation, machinery, machine tools. So anyway, now we come to this uh, terminology. Okay, that is. Yeah, this is the. I mean, uh, terminology, selection, how to selection of the gears. I mean, briefly, we discuss how to selection of the gears. One is layout of the shop. Okay, layout of the shop. Just a minute. One minute, it's not. Uh... Okay, <laughs> anyway. Layout of, I mean, selection of type of gears. Few points, important points only, and I'm going to explain here. Selection of type of gears. How to select the type of gears? Gears now layout of the shaft based on layout of the shaft. Layout of the shaft and speed of the rotation, speed reduction based on speed reduction. Right now, based on power transmission capacity, based on power transmission capacity. Or transmission capacity. Now, I mean, now one by one. I mean, 
parallel shaft wherever shafts are parallel parallel shaft which type of gear spur gear <laughs> okay now intersecting shaft intersecting shaft intersecting shaft this is bevel gear <laughs> okay now axis of the shafts are perpendicular but non intersecting axis of the shaft axis of the shafts are perpendicular but non intersecting non intersecting now this is warm gears warm gears and the axis of the two shafts two shafts are neither perpendicular not intersecting axis of the two shaft axis of the two shafts are neither perpendicular sorry neither perpendicular okay nor intersecting nor intersecting then this for, for this type of this i mean uh, here crossed helical crossed helical gear crossed helical gear some of the things earlier we discuss some of the things this way also sorry okay now this is the way of i mean selection of the type selection of the type of gears based on application okay i mean now as i told you that spur gears are generate more noise due to sudden engagement but in helical gears the less i mean gears are engagement it's gradually going to happen hence that smooth functioning and can happen in the helical gears as well as more power transmission can be done in the helical gears now i mean these are the things now we move to the some more information about the gear trains these are the things also we are going to discuss in our talk uh, topic okay uh gear train what is a gear train please someone tell that what is gear train <clears throat> gear train what is a gear train when one or more sets of gear are arranged uh to for power transmitting purpose yeah exactly yeah exactly thank you i mean when two or more gears are made of mesh with the, each other to transmit the power from one shop to another shop for example we already discussed two gears i mean one pinion meshing with the another gear pinion mesh pinion mesh with the another gear right but suppose but in this case these two shafts are rotating in opposite direction this shaft rotate this direction this shaft is rotates in op this direction clockwise direction anti clockwise direction but suppose i would like to transmit the power from the same rotation of the other shaft here clockwise I mean clockwise direction this is sorry one small mistake had done the arrow i did a mistake now this is the anti clockwise but i would like to transmit the power in same direction i mean this is my be my input to shaft input to shaft connected here now this is my output shaft now the output power is uh, output power is in the form of anti clockwise direction now i would like to transmit the power in same direction then another same direction of this shaft then this is now right now this is no i mean this is this kind of arrangement is called gear trains i mean there are different types of gear trains we are going to discuss okay now the nature of the train is used it depends upon the velocity ratio record and the relative position of the axis of the shaft and rotation of the shaft okay now these are the things 
just we go through now gear trains combination of gear wheels used to transmit the motion power from one stop to another stop based on our requirement based on our requirement okay now i mean not only rotation i would like to transmit the velocity i mean appropriate velocity from one one shot to another shot yeah, i would like to reduce large number large velocity ratio then i have to put more gears then i can get less i mean i can get a large and large velocity ratio okay now for example there are different types of gear and simple gear train whatever we discussed earlier i have drawn that is the simple gear train the compound gear train the riveted gear train epicyclic gear train see here now i mean this um, application is not limited automobile ships clocks watches lathe machines machine tools there are a lot of applications we are using gears it's not limited one now simple gear train simple gear train with idler pulley compound gear train now see here this is simple gear train <laughs> right now arrangement of gears with the series of simple gear train now two mesh gears rotate in opposite directions now simple gear train i mean the gear speed ratio i mean this is a n1 speed is this is this this basics are important when we are going to discuss the when we are going to design the gear okay n1 i mean speed of the pinion to the speed of the gear now number of teeth <laughs> this is number of number of teeth on pinion is equal to number of teeth on the gear number of teeth on the gear now i come to this simple gear train with idle or pulley now the both this is the input shock this is output shock i mean both are rotating in the same direction with the help of the idle or pulley this also under simple gear train now i come to this applications okay now simple gear train with idle or pulley now this is the speed of the speed ratio now the speed ratio first they are considering this two gear this two this set second they are considering this two set the this two set for finding the gear ratio finally they are i mean so i mean this i mean solving from this equation one and two find finally n1 by n3 is equal to t3 by t1 okay first they are considering this two set gear one and uh, i mean idler gear two second they are considering output gear and idler gear two then finally from this two equation they are resolving this two equation simplifying this two equation finally they are getting n1 by n3 is equal to t3 by t1 now this is nothing but speed of the driver gear there will be speed of driven gear i mean this is speed of driver gear there will be speed of driven gear or driven gear you may say that a follower okay now now i mean is equal number of teeth on driven gear divided by number of teeth on driver gear now this simple gear train now we are using two idler pulley okay now this is the compound gear train <laughs> compound gear train now whatever we discussed earlier all shaft which each shaft connected a single gear single gear <laughs> but in compound gear train the middle of the shaft is connected with the couple of gears it's sometimes more than two gears also but the last the end shafts are always connected to single gear this is a compound gear train <laughs> compound gear train see <laughs> this is the compound gear train <laughs> now i come to the compound gear train i mean velocity ratio of the compound gear train here also they are considering the first two set i mean first they are considering this two set where it is meshing this is meshing this is a meshing with this this gear is meshing with this pinion one okay <laughs> this g1 this gear g2 is meshing with the pinion i mean idler gear four this is pinion two or pinion pinion two this is a pinion four <laughs> okay this gear five meshed with Love drive. I mean, driven. So driven shop, driven gear, driven gear or driven pinion six, six p six. But see here, the end shop, the input, the output shop are connected with single gear. But the intermediate shops are connected more than 
more than one gears and gears or pinion or combination then this is called compound gear train compound gear train now here also we are considering first this two set one and two we are considering for finding the velocity ratio sorry one and two then later we are considering two and three i mean one and two and three and four then finally five and six find six then consider this set like that for finding the I mean speed ratio finally once we obtain the three set of equations from that we can simplify this the total I mean whole gear ratio okay now finally this is the finally the velocity ratio going to be obtained now this is the velocity ratio now i mean n by because n2 n3 same n2 n3 are same speed because n4 n5 same speed how same speed n n4 n5 same speed i tell you that because both are connected in same shop both are connected in same shop no see here sorry this is simple gear trying see here two and three connected same soft four and five connected same soft hence the speed is same n2 is equal to n3 n4 is equal to n5 because all are connected in the same soft so based on that assumption based on that condition not assumption that condition we are i mean eliminating n2 n3 same n5 n4 same finally n1 by n6 is equal to this this uh, compound gear train last ratio is nothing but speed of the first driver driven by speed of the last driven now reverted gear train <coughs> here the end shot both are connected in same i mean the end shot the input and output shot always connected more than one gears or more than one gears or more than one gear and pinion or vice versa <laughs> okay but all the axis all the shaft going to be in same i mean as must be in same the axis of the shaft must be in same <laughs> this is the input shaft this is our output shaft output shaft here power is transmitted here i mean we, this is looks like a top view you can't see here now see here this is not a single shaft the shaft is connected here the power is transmitted here okay now this is the rotated gear train velocity ratio now i mean r1 plus r2 is equal to r2 plus r4 i mean based on the engagement now this is this shaft dial distance what is the distance this is the distance r2 okay uh, this is the distance r4 this must be same with this distance i mean this r3 I mean this R3 now I take another color this R3 plus this is uh, this small this is R1 I think R2 here one minute R1 plus R2 sorry this is R2 plus where it is encased plus R1. Similarly, R1, R3 plus R4. R3 plus R4. The distance are same. Based on that simple basic, we are going to use for finding the velocity ratio. Now, now T1 plus T2, number of T plus T2 is equal similar. Now I mean, finally, the speed ratio product of this number of teeth on the driven drivers driver driver, product of number of teeth on the driven dri dri driven gears. This is the driver gears. <coughs> and finally, we are obtaining like this only T1 in T2 numerator is in odd even numbers T2 T4. 
new denominator in odd numbers in comp reverted gear train reverted gear train this is not a compound gear train okay now types of gear train we discussed the, that's all okay now we move to i think you may have got it some idea about the gears i mean some of the content what are the content some i mean most of the content i think i mean when i was teaching the section the bme section i explored but even though this uh, this content was more in the whatever i explained more as compared to your first year bme syllabus but some of the contents can be used for our uh, dt now <clears throat> now i come to here i will share you both i will share you that slide also i think yesterday we discussed now our gear design is going to based on that beam strength and beam strength and wear strength i mean beam strength is based on the levis equations who developed that concept levis equation and wear strength is based on the bucking equation uh, this is we are going to clearly discuss in the later now i'm um, wear strength due to effect of fitting effect beam strength due to effect of bending moment a bending bending effect bending effect in the gear now as we discuss more amount of information already we discussed for gears various of the gears now we go to this yeah this also we discussed already this is the <laughs> spark gears and uh, i mean this is the helical gears now the hel just a very brief point i tell you that this helical gears right handed helical teeth here this is right handed helical teeth on the pinion left handed helical teeth on the gears are meshed to each other in the helical gear this is the herring bone gear so this is the i mean special type of gear i mean i mean in the same cylindrical disc the, this is the opposite side the teeth are formed in opposite direction up of the teeth formed I mean right hand directions up i mean another teeth is formed in the i mean left hand direction left sorry this is left hand helical teeth this is right hand helical teeth is formed in single disc hence here no axial thrust and no the radial thrust <coughs> created on the shaft due to due to this type of gear design and the bevel gears we had already discussed here now this is for for transmission of intersecting shock this is warm and warm wheel we discussed now we move to <clears throat> one more thing yeah now this is helical gear this is the spur gear this is warm wheel i mean warm and warm wheel now this is the rack and pinion this is epicyclic gear train okay now where is the application application as i told you that it's the lot of application especially for i mean you can see bicycles to transmit the motion okay and the aircraft engine in the air not aircraft engine so air in the aircraft we are using for landing gears landing gears especially designed to absorb the shock while uh, absorb the shock and shock and energy when the aircrafts land landing and then release gradually while landing it will absorb the energy also how much energy will be absorbed the same amount of energy will be released such a way that they have been used the gear arrangements in the aircraft there are a lot of application for watches gear train in mechanical watch gear gears in uh, uh, our uh, drilling machine okay now we come to the fundamental law of gearing now what is fundamental law of gearing now see in order to obtain the constant angular velocity the common normal to the tooth profile at the point of contact should always pass through the fixed point they call the fix, pitch point now i tell you I mean anyway i give you clear information don't worry now see here now just listen this diagram that two this is maybe gear 
this is maybe pinion or you may consider both uh, i mean top one is gear bottom one is pinion now see here for our calculation for our understanding only we consider the one teeth i mean one teeth from pinion and one teeth from the gear which are meshed to each other i mean even when the power transmission from pinion to gear or in gear to pinion i mean always engagement going to happen only one teeth only one teeth for example now when the power is a transmitter uh, for example i may consider gear 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay as such i mean always always engagement and disengagement going to happen between one teeth from the gear and between one teeth from the pinion the engagement and disengagement going to happen always one teeth from the pinion and one teeth from the gear now this is the pinion now gear pinion pinion teeth 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that now see here now how can i maintain constant velocity ratio that is important now when the engagement are happening when this is the uh, rotating in anti clockwise direction this is rotating in rotating anti clockwise direct uh, anti clockwise direction this is rotating in clockwise direction right now when the engagement when the pinion teeth and gear teeth are engaging during that time creating the point contact that the point always is same i mean for example gear 1 and 1 is engaged gear 1 and 1 gear 1 i mean i put the gear 1 the p1 and uh, sorry please if you are not understanding please ask me that it is very important question very important because even if you go for higher education this type of uh, questions you may expect in the interview <clears throat> now pinion teeth one and the gear teeth one <clears throat> pinion teeth two and gear tooth two pinion teeth three and the gear teeth three this is keep on engagement and disengagement right but when the pinion teeth one and gear teeth one are engaging that is called a point contact point contact right i mean now once engaged then this is moved away from the contact position then p2 and g2 come and engage the same same point the now p2 is coming and engaging with the g2 now p2 is en sorry now p2 is coming and now p1 already completed p1 is engaged and left now now p2 is coming for example p2 this is where this contact gear teeth and the pinion teeth p2 is coming and engaged that the point must be same then you now you just imagine it how much accuracy we have to follow while manufacturing the gears okay i mean the same point p1 g1 p2 and g2 p3 and g3 whenever there is consequently engaging disengaging to be happen at the same point then only we able to obtain the constant velocity ratio that is the fundamental law of gearing okay now uh, okay so are you clear any doubt in this yeah please anyone have doubt no sir okay yeah now just now we uh, look about now we discuss about the i mean velocity ratio now see here now this is a gear or pinion this is pinion now the pinion teeth is engaged with the gear teeth okay now that a point i i i can draw a line n n from that point of contact the same point now the gear pinion gear one pinion teeth one gear teeth one are engaged when this guy moved away from the engagement 
from the point the another teeth will come i mean another teeth in that sense p2 and t2 going to be encaged p2 and t2 going to be encaged from gear teeth to from pinion teeth to going to be encaged at the same location same point then only we able to obtain the constant velocity p consequently p3 p4 p4 p um, p3 sorry p3 g3 p4 g4 p5 g5 should be encaged at the same point of contact same point of contact same location <laughs> then then only we able to obtain the constant velocity now we come to the derivation now 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 this is the contact point in this contact point i have drawn a perpendicular line from this point now i can draw a perpendicular line from this point now this is n that is i now i am considering normal common normal n i am saying that common normal n common normal at the point of contact at the point of contact okay now this is common normal at the point of contact n now c see here this is the point c is called point of contact between the between the teeth of two gears or between the teeth of pinion or pinion and gear you may consider gear one you may consider gear two also doesn't matter okay that way also you can consider either gear or pinion you may also you may consider gear two gear one like that no problem okay but what is the c here c is nothing but the point of contact between the two uh, between the i mean teeth of two i mean teeth of two gears teeth of two gears is c now i mean this is the center o1 is the center of gears uh, gear center one o2 is uh, gear center two center okay now this is the angular velocity now omega one omega two is the angular velocity omega one and omega two is the angular velocity now <laughs> Omega one angular velocity of gear one and angular velocity of gear two respectively. Now this is angular velocity. Now how can I find out the velocity? Velocity of the gear. Now I take the perpendicular the perpendicular distance from here the angle of coming I mean, point of contact. Then you able to find out the velocity. Now see here this is the point of contact. Now this is the we know the radius right? Now this is the distance we know. O to C, O to C. We know this radius of the gear one, right? Now take a part O two into C. What is O two into C into omega two? <laughs> that is nothing but you take the perpendicular. You might have been studied even I think kinematic machinery or dynamics machinery. You might have been studied this velocity diagram. Now draw the perpendicular line from this C. This is our velocity w to omega two into o c o two c. It is the velocity of the our gear two. Now, similarly, take the perpendicular line from the point C. That perpendicular line from this o one c o one c. That is a c a c a. Now, uh, what I mean this line that is not this is nothing but cb this is nothing but a cb get two velocity now this is o2 o1 c i mean o1 c into o1 c into omega 1 this is nothing but this perpendicular line this is ca velocity of the gear 1 gear 1 this is the velocity of the gear 2 okay c is the contact now point of contact between two gears and now these two vectors now these two vectors c a and c b these two vectors projection of these two vectors will give you c d projection of these two vectors will give you c d how i can say projection of these two vectors when you are projection of these two vector to make 90 degree now c a and c b these two project these projection of these two vectors to make a 90 degree in the common normal that is cd cd okay cd 
okay now these are the things now we have to understand for the when we are going to discuss the derivation now okay now cd now now c is i mean ca is perpendicular to anyway in the next page i come to the next page now ca is perpendicular to o1c ca is perpendicular to ca this is the velocity ca of gear 1 gear 1 velocity ca is perpendicular to o1c similarly ocb is perpendicular to o2c c2 is perpendicular to o2c now as i we already discussed what is cd is the projection of these two vectors c and cb okay now now this is already we discussed from this whatever we discussed the velocity of gear one and the velocity of gear two from these relations we able to find out uh, omega one by omega two is equal to o one o two c divided by o one c is in c a divided by c b okay now i'm taking now another rectangle triangle i mean i'm taking similar triangle here now first i'm taking this similar triangle o one c g o one c g here this is o one c g this similar triangle o one c g this is point g this is this triangle okay this triangle and this triangle these are similar triangle with respect to gear one cg i mean o o i mean from this o c o1 cg and the c a d c a d these are similar triangle from this similar triangle now see here I mean, O1 C divided by CA, O1 C divided by CA. I come to, I take the pointer, O1 C divided by CA, CA, because a similar triangle. Now, these two dimensions are perpendicular, right? This is O1 G divided by CD, G, I mean CD from this point, CD, O1 G divided by CD. Similarly, I take the gear two, gear two, just gear two. Here, where is this similar triangle? This is, I mean, O two, O two F C. This is similar triangle. O two F C. This similar triangle with respect to gear two. Now, with respect to gear two, these are the similar triangle. These are the similar triangle. similar triangle now where is the first time considering o2 c o2 c o2 c where is the perpendicular this is the perpendicular direction then o2 c divided by cb similarly i am considering this o2 f o2 f divided by from this point of contact we have to take point of contact here i mean from this point of contact here we have to take this is cd I mean, now we got it this from the similar triangle with respect to gear two. Okay. Now solve this equation B and C. Then finally we are going to get the C A by C A by C B is equal to we are getting this. Finally, substitute this equation A. We are going to get this is omega one divided by omega two is equal to O two F divided by O one G. Then O two F O one G. What is O two F O one G? That is nothing but I mean, this is that is nothing but O two P and O two O one P. Okay, that is nothing but O two P O one P. Okay, see so this one. So finally, I mean, see here that that is O one. I mean, from this equation B and C, we have been derived. I mean, omega one by omega two is equal to O two F O one G because this. B and C, we have been derived the equation D. The D we have to substitute in this equation. A, A is nothing but uh, A equation. A is nothing but this. Omega, omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to O2C in divided by O1C into C A by C B. When you substitute this, find we are getting it. Getting this omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to O2F by O1G. From this relation, now, I mean, I mean, I mean, again, you can consider O2FP with respect to this similar triangle. 
with respect to this which one is similar triangle another similar triangle i am considering o2 p o2 f p this is similar triangle now i erased earlier one excuse me sir we have another class at 10 yes i stop it here now this is yeah i stop it within 2 minutes okay now this is another similar triangle from gear 2 okay <laughs> this is another triangle and uh, then where is another here i mean with respect to gear 1 with gear 1 o1 gp o1 gp this is o1 gp okay from this two similar triangle we can find out o1 g and whatever we discussed earlier o2 g o2 f divided by o1 g is nothing but o2 p o2 p divided by o1 p finally this is o1 omega 1 divided by omega 2 omega 2 is equal to o1 o2 p by o1 p i mean then this come this this o2 p plus o1 p must be constant always either gear a uh, gear teeth p1 or g1 p1 or g1 or p2 g2 or p3 g3 or you may consider g1 gear teeth is i mean uh, gear 1 teeth and gear 2 teeth sorry gear 1 teeth that that confusion only i put a p1 g1 like that this is gear 1 gear 2 here teeth 1 i am putting it like that or okay now gear 1 teeth 2 gear 2 teeth 2 or gear or gear 1 teeth 3 or gear 2 teeth 3 when you are engaging this should not change this should not change okay this is law of gearing law of gearing okay the p is always constant the last thing now please cooperate just one minute i complete the angular velocity ratio angular velocity is ratio yeah, between... no, another class sir okay i complete but this is last one last slide please the angular velocity between the gears the greatest must be cons cons remain constant whatever we discuss when throughout the mess gear one gear gear I mean teeth one two throughout the messing okay the angular velocity this is mv is equal to omega out divided by omega in this is nothing but omega two divided by omega one or omega one divided by omega two like that this is the radius in radius out whatever we discussed earlier here put out in such a way that earlier we discussed one two like that okay the notation is different now how we are considering positive sign negative sign the pitch radius of this equation is rolling cylinders which is adding to the teeth the positive or negative sign accounts for the in based on internal and external cylindrical sets for example this is the i mean internal and this is the external set this is the external set the gear this is the pinion now now see here this is external set now the gear is engaged here this is the pinion teeth this is the gear teeth are engaged external in this is called external set in this external set both are in opposite direction hence we are considering that negative sign now i come to the internal set here in the internal set the teeth are engaged like this i mean both are in same direction then here we are considering the positive sign here the internal gear set the gear set will have the same direction of rotation of the input output shocks and we are considering the positive sign from this equation i mean this equation and this equation both are same only okay omega and omega 2 okay uh, that's similar equations so that's all so remaining things we will discuss tomorrow i mean uh, uh, this is also similar invalid we discuss in the next class yeah so today we discussed types of gears application of gears selection of type of gears and uh, and what are the loads what are the loads are involved in different types of gears we discuss and finally we discuss that law of gearing so i stop it here so if you have any questions please go ahead yeah please no doubt sir
Yeah, thank you, Amarnath. I already posted a video. Have you received the videos? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, Kalyan. If you have any doubt, please go ahead. Otherwise, I close the meeting. No doubt, sir. Okay, Kalyan. Thank you. Bye. I'm closing the meeting. Yes, sir.